Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today's video is based on an interesting topic, but ultimately for consumers it doesn't really mean all that much, so I hope I have you intrigued. I recently came across some information regarding AMD's Radeon RX Vega GPUs, and I want to share and explain what I think it means after having a bit of a think. So just quickly, AMD released the Vega 56 and 64 graphics cards back in August of last year, some five months ago now. At the time, they sold out in seconds, and since then, supply has been unable to meet the demand, and miners are mostly to blame for this. There was also some pricing controversy regarding rebates just days after release, but I think that's been proven to be inaccurate now, as they were briefly available in November at the MSRP before supply once again ran out. In spite of poor availability, a good many of you have been pressuring me to review a custom RX Vega graphics card from one of AMD's partners. This is likely due to the fact that I keep openly bashing AMD's reference design, claiming it's hot, loud, and you shouldn't buy it. Numerous custom design models have been announced now, but getting your hands on one is next to impossible. I myself can't even get one despite AMD stating they're willing to support me directly. I've been told for months now, they're coming. That was until last week when two of AMD's board partners told me they're no longer coming at all. This all had me a bit confused, and after making a few more inquiries, it was confirmed by one exclusive partner and one massive partner that the custom models had effectively been cancelled as they were no longer receiving Vega 56 or 64 GPUs from AMD. And this meant even the reference design AMD models weren't being supplied, so no Vega graphics cards were being sold by either of these partners. I thought, that can't be right, and began digging a little more. First, I decided to see who actually has RX Vega stock and what models slash brands are in supply. So I popped over to Newegg and found, well, nothing. They did list some custom Gigabyte models at insane asking prices with no stock along with a single power color model also out of stock and a reference model sold by XFX, which was also out of stock. What was in stock was the Vega Frontier Edition, and I'll come back to that shortly. Every other US-based retailer I checked, and there was more than a dozen that I looked into, also showed zero stock for the Vega 56 and 64 graphics cards. Then hopping over to the local Australian-based retailers, and again I looked at over a dozen different retailers, I found the same story. In fact, PC Case Gear now lists just a single Vega 56 model, and of course, it's out of stock. I also tried the AMD shop on their official website and checked all the links they provide there for various retailers, and again, none of them had stock either. I also decided to have a look at pre-built systems, though there are almost none that feature RX Vega graphics cards. That said, I do know of one, a Cybertron PC packing an AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1920X with a reference RX Vega 64 graphics card. Heading over to Best Buy, there are over two dozen models to choose from, but just one of them sports an RX Vega graphics card inside, and guess what? It's the only one out of stock. There is one exception to all this though, and that's Apple. AMD obviously don't want to upset the Apple cart, so you can still buy a horrendously overpriced iMac Pro to get a Vega 56 or 64 graphics card. It's only $8,260 for a Vega 64 version with an 8-core Xeon CPU, 32GB of memory, and a 1TB SSD. I'll include an affiliate link for you guys in the video description below. I'm always looking out. So at this point, I knew two things. There appeared to be not a single Vega 56 or 64 card in stock anywhere in the US or Australia. That's not completely unusual for Vega, but coupled with the fact that two of AMD's partners told me that AMD is not currently taking orders for either GPU had me intrigued. What did this mean exactly? My first thought maybe there was some sort of serious issue with production. Could yields really be that bad? At this point though, you'd expect that yields of the massive 486 mm squared died had to start to improve, so it probably had to be something else. Then I noticed that while there wasn't a single Vega 56 or 64 card for sale anywhere, there did appear to be quite a few Vega Frontier Edition graphics cards in stock. I also recalled seeing the Frontier Edition models for sale in the US, and hopping back over to Newegg, we can see the air-cooled version selling for a cool $1,500, or more conveniently for miners, half a dozen for $9,000 US with a free six piece riser kit included. Ah, oh, what a nice deal for miners. I should note these Frontier Edition graphics cards are being sold via Newegg through a third party seller called U-Shop Mall, so not Newegg themselves. At the time of putting this video together, Newegg didn't actually have stock, so the Frontier Edition can still be difficult to track down, especially at a reasonable price. 
At that point, the penny started to drop. I began to speculate that AMD probably hadn't reduced supply of their Vega GPUs, rather they had redirected all available supply to their Frontier Edition line. By choice, miners would prefer to buy Vega 64 as it's essentially the same product. Well, it's the same GPU, but with half as much HBM2 memory, and it comes at an MSRP of $500 US. Vega Frontier Edition, on the other hand, boasts an MSRP of $1,000 US, so in other words, it costs twice as much, and the only difference is the HBM2 memory capacity. Granted, HBM2 memory is expensive, and best estimates put the cost of 8GB at around $150 US. So assuming you can double that for 16GB, which you should be able to do, uh, this means there's about $150 US worth of extra memory on the Frontier Edition card. AMD, though, they're charging at least $500 US more, so they're pocketing, let's say, $350 US on that deal. Uh, this is assuming when they're selling directly to retailers such as Newegg, AMD aren't increasing the price themselves, but I have no evidence of that. And it is possible they could be, but again, no evidence of that. What I do know is that AMD sells their reference designed RX Vega cards to their partners who then slap on their own branding before pushing them out to distributors and retailers. Generally, this is done to take up the slack before the board partners produce their own custom design models. And at that point, AMD is just selling them the GPU. With the Frontier Edition, AMD makes those exclusively, or rather, contracts a manufacturer to produce them. This means AMD sells their Radeon Pro brand of graphics cards directly to distributors and or retailers. So they have a bit more flexibility when it comes to pricing and they're of course cutting out the middleman. So with market conditions that see every last GPU you can produce snapped up almost before you can get it out the factory door at alarmingly high prices thanks to price gouging by board partners, distributors, retailers, and maybe even AMD themselves, why would AMD even entertain the idea of selling that product for $400 or $500 when they can get at least $1,000? Speaking of price gouging, Newegg sellers, for example, are selling the $1,000 Frontier Edition for $1,500, but they're also selling Vega 64, should it become available, for $1,400. Again, the blame here might not be entirely on retailers. We just don't know what AMD are really charging for them, though I tend to believe AMD is not overcharging. Anyway, as for shipping Frontier Edition models only, or at least focusing the bulk of the production here, it just makes sense for AMD to do this, and honestly, I can understand why they are doing this. Anyway, I'm just speculating that this is what they're actually doing, and the evidence I have certainly suggests that this is the case. Their compute-heavy GCN 5th generation architecture is highly desired by miners, and there's really not much they can do about that. For now, the goal would be to pump out as many Vega GPs as they can, slap them on Frontier Edition graphics cards, and make maximum profit. I'm not saying AMD has discontinued or even stopped producing Vega 56 and 64 graphics cards, but the evidence would suggest that they're shifting focus to the Frontier Edition models at the moment. As I said earlier, it looks like Apple's still getting their Vega graphics cards, and some retailers have told me they're expecting fresh shipments sometime next month. How large those shipments are, though, is hard to say. Reading between the lines, though, it's not expected to be that significant, at least for most retailers. Anyway, in the short term, this really does suck for gamers, and I'm sure many of you are getting ready to comment something about how corrupt or unfair AMD is below in the comment section. But as I said, I don't really have a problem with this, or at least I understand why they're doing it, if AMD are indeed doing this. And if they are, I think this is exactly what they should be doing. When retailers start selling Vega 64 graphics cards for well over $1,000, AMD doesn't make a single extra dollar from that sale. Where they do make many more dollars is when they sell that same GPU on a Frontier Edition graphics card. If that profit is then used to develop better gaming graphics cards, then that's great. Let's be honest, right now, on the gaming front, AMD is really getting abused by Nvidia, as the green team is smacking AMD around at almost every price point. It's a brutal way of putting it, but I think most of you will agree it's also very true. Had it not been for this seemingly never-ending mining boom, AMD's GPU division would be in very poor shape right now, and you'd see loads of Vega 56 and 64 graphics cards on shelves, because just about every gamer who wanted one probably would have bought one by now. Of course, I have reached out to AMD for a comment on this story, and as you'd expect, at this point, they're neither confirming nor denying. All they've told me is that they are working on a formal statement, but it will come after they announce their earnings. For now, this is all I have to say in an official capacity. 
We are currently in a quiet period in advance of announcing our fourth quarter financial results on January 30th and are unable to comment at this time on certain financial related items such as GPU demand or market pricing. Again, just to be clear, I'm in no way bashing AMD and I do think they are making the right move here, assuming I am right about all this, of course. AMD also told me they're 100% committed to gamers and they're working on devising ways of getting graphics cards into the hands of gamers going forward. And gamers, again, are their primary focus when it comes to developing new graphics cards. I know everything we've discussed here contradicts this statement, but remember, this is a quick reaction to solve an issue AMD currently faces, or at least capitalize on an issue that they're currently facing, and long-term solutions could look very different. Anyway, in summary, don't expect to see any custom Vega 56 or 64 graphics card reviews here at Harbour Unboxed anytime soon. At this point, it kind of goes without saying, but at least this provides a little bit more information as to why that is. It's a real shame. Hopefully, this is just some short-term pain for gamers, and it will result in a brighter future where we see stronger competition between AMD and NVIDIA, much like what we're seeing between AMD and Intel right now. That's going to do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.